say wah ah oh, and they say ah ah oh. Them boys crazy, them niggas go oh oh. Chopper spray, pistol oh oh, and they say wah ah oh, and they say ah ah oh. And they say wah ah oh, and they say ah ah oh. Them boys crazy, them niggas go oh oh. Chopper spray, pistol oh oh, and they say wah ah. And once I say what's up, she looked down at him and she was like, that's not your father. That's your daddy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, once we started talking, I'm telling her like, hey, check this out. We stay right here, one building in front of y'all. And now he have a little sister. You know what I'm saying? That's Desiree at the time. I'm like, now he have a little sister. So they need to like know each other, you know, and be together and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Grow up with each other. You know, just, just let her know. That we need to make the two kids, you know, be in each other alive. You know what I'm saying? And she was like, okay, well, you know, I have a family now too, which at this time, she done had a child by the older guy that went to school with my uncle. And uh, she was like, I have a, a child now too, and, you know, I have to talk to my other half, you know, make sure, like this. I'm like, oh, no, okay, well, just let me know. And when I tell y'all, it wasn't even 14 days after that. Or just about when I ride back there again, and she done moved again. Just like the first time she got up and left, boom, I don't know what she, boom. She done moved again. So when I go back home, I tell my child, I'm like, hey, they don't need to stay back there anymore. They just got up and left. We like, what? Well, you know, however. But it took to that boy, my son was, he ended up being, I think, 18 years old. And he found me on the internet, you know. Uh, American Nightmare, my movie, my biopic that finna come, we revamp and finna come back out on Two Men Prime. Um, well, next month, I, I think, I think, I have to look at it. This ain't next month. But um, he had found me on the internet. It was very popular at the time. It was in Borders, Barnes & Noble. We had major dis distribution on it. And um, he found me on the internet, on Facebook or something, man. And he reached out to me. So he you know, reached out to me, man. I'm like, where you stay at? He told me, so I'm like, well, you know, I ain't seen him since he was, you know, at, um, seven. You know what I'm saying? Seven, eight, you know, right there. And now he is like 18 or 19 years old. So we, we talking about nine or 10 years done passed. So time he told me that, man, I'm excited. Um, Desiree with me, grabbed dead. My wife, we jumped in the car. I think we probably had like three kids at the time. And, uh, ooh, that's a long time ago. <laughs> And um, we end up you know, going up to his house, man, you know, mom house, you know, seeing her. We chat real quick. She was like telling me, you know, hey, you come in, you know, but my wife and my other kids in the car. And I just didn't want that look. Y'all got to think about just the small, small things that we do. You know, it can affect people in different ways. And I looked at that like, you know, she offered me, you know, for me to come in. She was just being generous. But my wife is in the car. There's no trust issues or nothing. But it just... Once you close the door, you know, your mind goes to thinking what they're doing or what they're doing, all that stuff. So I wanted to eliminate that by just staying on the porch. He came out. Man, you know, I was so happy to see him. He was happy to see me. And, it, you know, we took him um, to get some wings, one of eight wings, chilled out or whatever. And we were finna go down my mom's house. But, like, I had, you know, I was feeling certain things, certain way because I told my mom I was coming back but then I was feeling a certain type of way so I didn't go but I did stop on like on the way down to my mama's house I made a detour and stopped at my mama's sister house which my which is my aunt Sharon Knox may she rest in peace but um you know she had pool table her husband L what's up Uncle L um Elvis Chrysler you know you know he greeted them just like he was his nephew of course, my aunt did, because my aunt is the same aunt that stayed next door to his mother when you know, we met and conceived him or whatever. So so we really had a nice night, man. We really had a nice night. And, you know, we took him back. You know, I told him I'd call him the next day or whatnot, but I did. But I did call his mother. And, um, you know, I talked to his mother, and I, and I just told her actually how I felt, you know. And, you know, she didn't want to, she didn't understand, she didn't like it or whatever it was with her, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, you know, me personally, I really feel that I hurt her, 
You know what I'm saying? I really feel that I hurt her when I went to her years ago and I said that to her. She was young and th that was just that because, you know, why would anybody just up, take the child, don't let nobody see them, tear the schools and stuff, you know, and all that stuff. And, you know, just like the daycare, they you know the daycare, we went there and the, and, the, and the lady wouldn't let us see him. That wasn't the only time, y'all. You know, me and my mother and my sister found that he was going to this school at one point in the story. You know what I'm saying? And we went to the school on Valentine's Day. Just took a lot of candy and balloons and everything. And the principal that was at the school at that time, she, her name was Miss West. Hey, Miss West, I love you, baby. She was also the principal at Woodland Middle School when I was in middle school. So here it is, 20 years later, she's the principal at my son's school. And when we find out he go there, we go there to see him, bring him some candy. But when she come out, hey, Don Trees, how you? I ain't seen you. And we, we greeted and we talked about old days. But just like the lady at the daycare, the principal um, um, let me know that the mother had left instruction on if the father come to the school to see him, don't let him see him. Real talk, man. You know what I'm saying? But of course, you know, that didn't happen. I ain't gonna get into no details, but uh, we got, you know, we seen him. Boom. Boom. You know, he was happy. The candy. Bam. Bam. You know, we left. You know what I'm saying? That thing you know, she take him out of that school. So, like, you know, you know, it was twists and turns throughout this whole time. You know what I'm saying? And once I told her how I felt after I dropped him off, she didn't like it. You know what I'm saying? And I don't know what she told him, but, you know, he didn't call me either. And I think maybe just recently, like maybe three years ago on Thanksgiving, um, he called me and, you know, talking, hey, you know, like that. And, you know, out of the cannons of my heart, I was like, yeah, you want to eat Thanksgiving with the Knox, no, the Knox family, you know what I'm saying? Because he do have my last name. I signed the birth certificate. So, you know, we brought him, I brought him down, took him around the family, my mama, my sister, you know, my aunts, my uncles, and everybody. Unfortunately, Cheryl had them pass to see him grow up and things of that nature, man. But, um, you know, they greeted him with open arms. And he loved that, you know. I, I, you know, it was nice to have him around and stuff, man, you know. But, um... You know, he went back home and life goes on. Like at this time, like I say, he's 28, he's 29. But the thing is, when he came down on this Thanksgiving day to, you know, share love and spend time and stuff, uh, once he got to my house, before we even went out to the family and all that, um, he had taken a DNA test with this other guy who his mother was having sex with before me, you know. And, um, I know the guy, of course, you know, man, his cousin is like best friends, you know what I'm saying? A little Tony cousin. But he came and brought me the DNA test of this, you know, the other guy that said that he 99.9% that hit his father. You know what I'm saying? And it was so crazy that I find out that this guy, you know, this child, who, you know, has our last name to carry it on to people that ain't even going to be some kin to us. You know what I'm saying? That how, she, you know, a, a person could say, you know, this is your child and you you actually get in trouble for it because, like, with, with, with the other relationship with Desiree Mother, it didn't turn out right and it wasn't a, a pretty ending. You know what I'm saying? Unfortunately, like, you know, a lot of... Uh, most of everybody that I dated, that we, we're not, you know, we, we separated, we're still friends. You know what I'm saying? Like, real close friends. But unfortunately, like, we had, we, our breakup wasn't nice. And um, when we, you know, at one point, she, you know, went and put me on child support. You know what I'm saying? And what happened was, I was, you know, I wanted to see, doing this whole ordeal, I wanted to see, you know, I was trying to, like, get it, to, you know, find my son. And so it was before way before he, he uh, contacted me and I just said, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go put myself up on child support for my son who, you know, she, she's, she's running, you know, um, taking him from me. You know what I'm saying? I already got her finna put me up for here, for him. I mean, for my daughter, I'm going to go ahead and put myself up for him and tell them people that they need to find her because I want to see my son. So that's what I did. I want to put myself up for child support for him. And unfortunately, they was like, we, you know, we can't find her, you know, just that. And, you know, they, they were just giving me the run around about it. You know what I'm saying? And I knew they could find her. They just didn't, they, they, they wasn't allowed to give me any information about her. You know what I'm saying? 
And I'm saying, she can put me on child support. I did. But they were like, but we still can you know, have. So with that being said, of course, I didn't pay it. Of course, you get built up. You go, you know, get trouble for it. I went through all that stuff uh, for years. And then to find out at the end that he ain't even my child. And then when I go to the courts with it, they were like, oh, we can't do nothing. We can't do nothing. And I think that there should be something put in place for that. Because if a girl can say that she's pregnant by you, and it's real talk. And y'all give me y'all opinion on that. It's real talk, man. If a girl can say that she's pregnant by you, and you believe her, you've been having sex with her, there's no doubt. Then you and you go, you're there with her the whole nine months, you sign the birth certificate, you're there with the baby, you train them, blah, blah, blah. So then, which we know, we know, we know this story before, we don't heard it millions of times. So then, you're on child support for this child. But what's different, because I don't read the law and learned out that it can be something done. Because in my case, I was I signed a birth certificate thinking that he was my child, but like it wasn't no really no father role played like like you know from an infant to to not even to not even you know one years old you know I, I wasn't I wasn't um I would say um there as like the father of course. Um, I came by to do the fatherly things like she needed something or things of that nature. But there's no way that a lady could have a child. And then once she, you know, and, and, and you think it's yours, you sign a birth certificate and things of that nature. And then she take the child after she have the child and just and just disappear. It just disappear now. You try to find her. You can't. You go put yourself on child support. You do it. And when the boy turned almost 30 years old, he himself and me find out that he's not my son and I'm not his father. So then we try to go to, you know, I try to talk to the courts about it and they say, I can't do that. They, 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 how can that be? Now, with him being the age that he is, and me thinking that he have like, you know, morals and, you know, like that. Because like I say, I had been around him on Thanksgiving, talking to him on the phone um, um, as as time, you know, as time going after that Thanksgiving two or three years ago, but three years ago. And I felt that he was like a nice young man, um, considerable, um, and would, you know, do the right thing type guy. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and, 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 and I should have known that it was different because who his father really is. And I know his father. So, you know what I'm saying? So with that being said, yeah, I said it. <laughs> with that being said, um, um, one day I'm talking to him. I call him. I have a situation like with my driver license and things because of the child support. So I had, I had back child support with him. I owed probably about 11 bands. So then um, I, I end up paying like eight bands off just at one time. I paid eight bands off at one time. And um, it was that like, you know, what was left, you know, 11, 1200, whatever it was, whatever. So I still, I had a situation with my license still. You know what I'm saying? So I hollered at him, called him, hey man, you know, we want to go to lunch. Man, I need to talk to you about some stuff like that. He was like, yeah, let's go to lunch. So we go to lunch. You know what I'm saying? We eat at one of the little restaurants on Main Street, College Park, look downtown, historical Main Street, um, College Park, historical College Park, Main Street. And uh, while we eating, I'm telling him uh, what's going on. Like, hey, man, check this out. Um, they're holding my license because the rest of that, that um, their child support money that I owe in a little balance. I ain't never like left 1200 man, but at this time, I need to go ahead and do this because I'm flying out of town. I need a passport. There's a whole bunch of stuff like that right now. And um, he had told me that he'll let me get the DNA test that him and his father took. But when he got to the restaurant, he told me he couldn't find it. So I was like, don't worry about it. And, and the reason why I said don't worry about it because I knew right in my bag I had a DNA test. So, so I was like, don't worry about it. You know, we started eating and still eating. So then, when, you know, later on, I brought it back up. And he was like, yeah, man, I was just looking for it. I just couldn't find it. I said, well, I, you know, I got a DNA test in the bag, so, you know, it's cool. And I just slicked it on him real quick. You know what I'm saying? And when I slicked it on, I seen that lump in his throat because I'm sitting right across from him. So then, let me, now listen to this. 
So then when I seen that he got uncomfortable because he know I got a DNA test, and I'm going to want him to take it, which I don't know why you would be uncomfortable. You took a DNA test with the other guy and it showed that he was your father. You know what I'm saying? That was that when you you stayed after that you had him stay when moved in with him for a minute and stuff. Had a little situation. Had to move in with him. So you know he told me the story. So I know this stuff. So here it is. Now I'm like, okay, well you know his father. You know he had been staying over there, whatever. They've been kicking it. Cool, cool, cool. Unfortunately, you know it's sad, but hey, you know things happen. So everybody cool on it. So now I got a situation. License. I paid most of the money that I owe. So big. I don't care. Y'all can have it. But let me go ahead and get my license right now. If I pay that, how can I do that? Man, matter of fact, if I can just get this the rest of this um, child thing cleared away, then I won't even have to pay that. Simple as that. So, I um once I told him I had the DNA test, like I said, he got uncomfortable. So, with that being said, I knew that I had to do something to make him feel back comfortable. And I knew that he had a living situation that wasn't up to par. And I knew that, like, we had a, a spare apartment that we, like, do our, have all our equipment and things like that. You know, right now to this day, that's the same same place. So I end up telling him, I know about his living situation. I remember him telling about his living situation. If you want to get that apartment, you know, it's already paid up for a year. If you want to get that apartment, you can come you know, live down until you get yourself on your feet. You know, I don't know if you, how you feel about living on the south side, but I'm just telling the little white tail. So when I said that, I said his eyes light up. And he like, of course, man, thank you, man. And he just feeling back good. Like the vibe that he had once he got there with me. You know what I'm saying? And you no, know, we gotta keep in mind that you know, this kid been thinking I'm his father for all these years. You know what I'm saying? He didn't know the other guy until just at recently. So I understand. You know, my movie came out, which, you know, I haven't even seen my movie. Uh, American Nightmare came out August of 2010. I haven't even seen it 30 times. And you know, you know the kid probably seen it a hundred and thirty. So, you know, and then he think that this, you know, this image that you see in the movie, which I gonna see it too, he think it's that it's only me. That's why I got the YouTube page. For people won't think when this movie come out, that's just all like how I am. You know what I'm saying? So I made him feel good and however and now his mind is on moving, you know, the college park area, often in the Buckhead area, just things of that nature. And um once we got through eating dinner, went to the store, got something else to drink, and then I went ahead and sprung it on my bike doing a DNA test. Right on Main Street, College Park, we out there sitting on like one of them benches, you know, watching the, you know, sights. And um, I started opening the test, and I started giving him the, the mouse wall, man. Like I said, man, 30, 28, 29, man. I started giving him the mouse wall, and uh, I can see that he really ain't moving, you know, my head down, so I can't really... I can see his legs and all that, but his hands ain't moving with it in it. So I look up at him, like, what's going on? And he was like, man, I can't do it. I'm like, huh? You can't take a DNA test with me so I can help myself? Like, I'm, and that goes for anybody. Like, how, how would you feel, you know, however, but you took a DNA test with this guy because you heard that he's your father. And then you found out that he was your father. So you know that Don Trees is not your father. And he wouldn't take the test. You know what I'm saying? And I don't understand the mindset, but then I think of the mindset of the family. You know what I'm saying? Not saying bad or good. I just know their mindset. So, you know, even both sides, the father's side and the mother side, I know both mindsets. So when I look at him, I can see it mixed. So that's the reason why he's like he is because who wouldn't do the right thing, period. Meaning like, like I say, you heard he was your father. You thought I was your father for all your life. I ain't, but you ain't never, you only see me like once. And this was, that when you was 18, 19, you just heard about me and seen my movie, seen me on TV and you know, whatever. And, you know, me personally, I think he's obsessed with me. Because what, what else could it be? We talking about, we talking about a kid. We're not talking about a kid, y'all. We're talking about a almost 30-year-old man that another man is coming to him saying, hey, man, you know, um, I know that you found out that he was your father. Unfortunately, you know, that's sad and all that. But I need you to do the same thing you did with your father. Just take a test with me so I can clear some stuff to better me. 
and, 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 and he wouldn't do that, bro. I mean, that's, that's to me, that's a hard pill to swallow. You know what I'm saying? Just off doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? So I have to deal with that. You know what I'm saying? I have to deal with that. They got a the little money. They spent it up. Now it's gone. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And like, and, and, and now we're here talking about it. You know what I'm saying? This is, this is, this is, wasn't even a part of my life. You know what I'm saying? Until they did these things and made made it a part of my life. You know what I'm saying? And now it's a story that I tell right here on Underground Source TV with your host, TV and film producer Don Trees Knox, a.k.a. OG Black Butt 3700, man. College Paul, stand up. Thank y'all for tuning in. Like and subscribe. And they say, ah, ah, oh, them bus cranks, them niggas go, oh, oh, chopper spray. Pistol, oh, oh, and they say, wow, oh, and they say, ah.